What's up, everyone? I'm B, the installer, and this is my awesome wife, Jen. Hi. <laughs> and Caesar's hanging out, looking for shadows. <laughs> and we're here because I have an awesome LG HU915QE Ultra Short Throw Projector and the 97-inch OLED, the G2. And I'm trying to figure out, like, which one would be better for this sort of room or for your room. And so in this video, we're going to go over all the criteria you might use to decide which is better. What do you think is going to win? Well, I think that one has a nicer picture, very clear. But it's $25,000. Okay, this one. I like this one. This one's much better. <laughs> but and it's, it's on the wall. <laughs> yeah, and it's already in the spot. Okay, see, so there's the dilemma, right? So yeah. we're going to have to go over all these things. Well, that sounds like a lot. Sounds like you've got some work to do. So I'm going to get out of here. When you're done discussing everything, I'll come back and I'll tell you again which one I think is my favorite. Um, give me the real opinion. Yeah, I'll give you yeah. the real opinion. But until then, make sure that you like and subscribe and hit the notifications bell so we can keep bringing you good content. Sounds good. Boom. Boom. <laughs> All right, before we get too far into this, a couple disclaimers. One, this is dimmed down quite a bit. And at the end of the video, I'm going to crank it up and let you see how bright this TV really is. But I think it would be unfair to have it at full brightness versus the ultra short throw because you just see that and you wouldn't understand any of the other differences. And secondly, I'm going to get off camera because it's not really easy to see anything with me standing right here. So let's do that right now. My goal with this isn't to say OLED or ultra short throw is better. It's more to think about why you'd really want to get one of these in a room over the other. And let's be honest, they're both awesome. They're both really expensive and maybe too expensive. But the reasons you might choose an OLED versus an ultra short throw can be true regardless of the price of the two. So still, you can make this comparison with two products that are less expensive than these. So let's check out the physical features of the two products first. So the cool thing is both of these can be put on the wall and look very clean. The LG OLED is meant to be hung on the wall. It's called the Gallery Series or Gallery Edition OLED. So it's less than an inch thick. It's got its own mount and can be hung neatly on the wall. It doesn't even come with feet. You have to buy those separately. While the LG Ultra Short Throw actually sits on a table and projects up onto a screen. So you have to buy your own screen, but it still looks really clean on the wall. Now with the projector, of course, you have a second piece. You have the screen and the Ultra Short Throw projector. Whereas with the TV, it's just the TV on the wall, that's it. And the LG G2 has speakers around the perimeter. Typically they have them on the back or on the sides. This LG actually has speakers that face downward, kind of out in the sides. And so the sound kind of comes out from the whole screen. While the UST has two speakers that fire directly out from the front face. So they both sound nice. They're a little bit different, but I think if you're gonna buy either one of these two products, you're probably gonna get some sort of sound system System to complement that, and that's what I would do in this instance. As far as installation goes, the LG OLED has its own mount for the G2. So it's not that difficult to put up, but you will have to follow the instructions. So you put the brackets on the back of the TV, you put the mount up on the wall, and you do need to make sure that you have power and HDMI cords run through the wall because once you try to lift this up on the wall, you're not gonna have a lot of access behind the TV. And then you can hang this. Looks beautiful on the wall once you're finished. It is a bit heavy, but it wasn't the hardest installation. With the ultra short throw, you do have to find a screen that doesn't come with it for the nine 15 QE here. You have to figure out which screen you want to get. Then you have to put that screen together, which takes a little bit of time, but then putting it up on the wall isn't too difficult. What's not so easy is actually getting the projector flat level, projected up onto the screen properly, getting the distance right from the wall. So you do have to tinker with it a little bit. Uh, I did have this too close to the wall and I had the focus ring down a little bit. So it was kind of out of focus and I wasn't sure why. I had to back it up, figure that sort of thing out. So there's a little bit of manipulation that you need to do in order to make it look great. And then also you have the problem that if someone comes in your room and bumps the table that it's on, you might have to readjust it again. So there's always that. But I've had a couple different projectors in this room and I have two kids and a dog. And really the only time that this projector moves is when my editor and I have to pick it up and put something else on the wall. So it's been pretty good so far. And the cool thing about the ultra short throw is that you don't have to have any wires in the wall. You can just set it on a table, set your components there next to it, and it's all good. It just fires up onto the screen. This is an ambient light rejecting screen. So if you have light above you in your seating area, you don't ever see them on this sort of screen. So it's good in a darker room or if you have can lights in the ceiling, you won't see the individual lights reflected in this ALR screen, but it's like any matte finished TV that if you have a lot of light in the room, it just sort of washes out the picture in general. 
But the OLED, on the other hand, is the reverse. It has very good anti-reflective properties, but if you have a lot of lights in the room, individual lights, they reflect directly back at you. So sometimes that can be a bit annoying, even though it's brighter, but the brightness does help to limit that effect. So if you're watching a lot of bright HDR in a bright room, you typically don't notice it. And again, it is pretty good at knocking down the reflection. The LG OLED actually has four HDMIs and can game at 4K at 120 frames per second. So that's really nice, really good features. Whereas the Ultra Short Throw only has three HDMIs and they're capped at 4K 60. So you can't game at those high speeds if you have a next gen console, but I don't know if that's the main priority of this Ultra Short Throw projector. With either three or four HDMIs, both of them offer enough connectivity for most people and they both have the ARC eARC port that can connect back to a soundbar or speaker system. And I think that's important because again, if you're spending this kind of money on either one of these, I think that's a necessary addition. As far as the internal features of the TVs, the operating system is a little different on both of them. The G2 has the new WebOS 22. So this is the most current operating system. It's very fast, it's very feature packed. It has an art or ambient mode where if you leave the TV sitting for a while, it'll go to your favorite art pieces before it turns off. With an OLED TV, that can be good and bad. I don't know how many people are gonna leave this TV on all day with that sort of art things, but you can set the timer to turn it off at some point. Overall, the WebOS and the processing on this OLED is really improved. On the other hand, the LG Ultra Short Throw has the WebOS 6.0, which is I think last year or the year before that even. And so it doesn't have as many features. It does not have the ability to customize the entire system based on your family preferences. So you can't choose specific profiles like the WebOS 22 does. And it also doesn't have an art or ambient mode at all. Then on top of that, it doesn't have the LG channels, which I really like because the newer OS has all these channels you can go through and find just random stuff. So if you don't have cable, fantastic benefit. And in addition, it doesn't even have YouTube TV. So when searching for that app, which is something that I use on a regular basis, we couldn't even find it. So I had to pull out the Apple TV, which I'm okay with because it has YouTube TV and all the things that I want. But just a little bit disappointing that this new Ultra Short Throw doesn't have the most current operating system. But I think most people will be fine either using the apps that they do have or getting your own third-party device, you know, Apple TV, NVIDIA Shield. A lot of people might have a PS5, Xbox. All those things can connect, so not the end of the world. I also noticed that the operating system 6.0 is actually slower or navigating around the menus at least is slower. So that's something that I think comes down to processing, but I'll get to more of that in a bit. Like the operating system, the LG Magic remotes are also a little bit different. The UST projector does come with the older version of that remote. It feels a little bit less premium, but the upside is it is backlit. So that is pretty cool, especially if you're in a theater room, dark room. However, the new LG Magic remote looks a little bit cooler. It's a little bit easier to use. It sits flat and doesn't rock on a table, but overall the functionality between the two, very similar. They both have the cursor up on the screen and all the fun LG Magic remote features. I think when it comes to picture quality, most people would agree that it's pretty tough to beat an OLED TV. At every single pixel, you can make it very bright, very colorful, or have it turned all the way off. So you get amazing detail, amazing contrast, whether it's an SDR or even HDR, you can get just remarkable picture quality. But on the other hand, an ultra short throw can look really good depending on where you have it. If you're in an average lit room or a dark room, a theater room, the overall brightness might not be that important. I have an OLED TV in my bedroom and I'll tell you that typically it's on its absolute lowest setting for brightness because it's so bright in that darker room. But that's just my use case. Maybe you want an OLED TV in a brighter room and the brightness is necessary, or this is specifically for a home theater that's always going to be dark and it really won't make that much of a difference. While I have your attention, let me tell you about this new app that I've been using. Because you can get yourself brand new electronics at huge discounts just by using it. It's called Deal Dash. How it works is they've got hundreds of auctions going on that you can bid on from tablets to TVs to cars and PS5s. And all the auctions start at $0 and every item is brand new. I've even seen a Nintendo Switch sell for $36. That's crazy. And Deal Dash makes it super easy to bid on products you want. You just sign up for Deal Dash and buy yourself a bid package. And you can buy anywhere from 10 to 20, 100, or even even a thousand bids. And then you just use those bids on all the discounted products on the app. Scrolling through the deals, I found this Nintendo Switch with the red and blue Joy-Con, which would make for an awesome Christmas gift. So I'm gonna get in on this bidding. So I just go down here and say that I wanna place a bid and look, now I'm the top bidder. But let's say I get outbid like I did there, but I wanna keep bidding so I can win this thing. I just come down here and put that I wanna place 20 bids. So now I can just sit back and relax while DealDash makes sure that I stay the top bidder. 
And best of all, every item you win comes with free shipping, so you never have to worry about extra shipping costs. And because Deal Dash is sponsoring this video, they wanted to give my followers a special deal. So go down to the description below and go to dealdash.com forward slash be the installer and use my code be the installer to get 100 free bids when you get your first bid pack. That link is in the description below. So go check it out and win yourself a new tablet or TV or an Xbox. Do it now. And thanks to Deal Dash for sponsoring the video. And while the overall brightness might not be that noticeable, in some content, the contrast is definitely noticeable. And remember, we have the OLED dimmed down here so that the brightness isn't noticeable, but depending on what content we have on, it's pretty easy to see that the OLED has much better contrast. That pixel level control is something that's extremely nice, and the ultra short throw just doesn't have that level of contrast. And as far as gaming goes, I think most people would be okay gaming on either one of these types of screen. I mean, you have a gigantic immersive screen in the 120 inch, you have a 100 inch OLED that's awesome for gaming as well. The only downside for the ultra short throw projector is that it doesn't game 4K 120. You can only get 4K 60 and traditionally projectors have more input lag. So it might be difficult for you to go online and play competitively against other people. While on the other hand, with the LG OLED, you basically have all the features you can think of. You have 4K at 120, you have all the different VRR, G-Sync, FreeSync. It's on four HDMI ports, so really fun to game on with super low input lag and you're definitely gonna be competitive on the LG G2. Good news for gamers is that both of the LG products have that cool game optimizer where you can go in and kind of mess around with the different settings and see all the speed and the black levels, the white levels, which VRR modes you have on or off. So pretty cool that LG has that, especially on the projector where it has the older operating system but still has this cool game optimizer. And I think overall, either one of them will be pretty fun. It's just a matter of if you need competitive gaming or more just recreational. So earlier, as I said, the processing seems to be a little bit slower on the ultra short throw, but when it comes to motion and clarity and upscaling, specifically watching sports and SDR, I didn't notice much of a difference. The ultra short throw actually holds its own. It looks really good in all of those different categories. I could go as far as to say that I actually like the motion better on the ultra short throw because when watching movies and other content, I've noticed that there's a little bit more judder on the OLED TVs because they have a near instantaneous response time. And I don't wanna to get too technical, but because the image can refresh so fast and so quick, you sometimes get that additional motion stutter. Now they do have settings to kind of alleviate those things. So both of these can be moved toward the more of the soap opera effect or more of how the creator may have intended the program to be. But I just noticed that QLED TVs, or in this case, the ultra short throw, sometimes can be a little bit smoother than an OLED TV. And and while sports looks pretty bright on the ultra short throw, when you go into HDR footage, if you're watching movies or any kinds of shows that are on HBO Max or Netflix, you're definitely gonna see a benefit with the OLED TV because that dynamic range looks so much better with that individual pixel level control. And remember this LG G2 is dimmed down quite a bit and I'm gonna unleash it and show you its full power in just a second. But first I wanted to go over a couple of the downsides of each of these TVs. First, let's talk about the G2. There's not a lot of downsides to a big, beautiful, vibrant OLED TV, except for the fact that this is extremely expensive. It started off being $25,000. And of course, it'll probably go down a little bit over the course of time, but that has to do with getting this giant 97 inch panel, putting all the technology into it, transporting it from the warehouse to your house, shipping all those factors. So extremely expensive, but for some people, it might be worth that expense. And there was one thing that kind of bothered me about this G2, and that's the uniformity of the panel. Sometimes depending on the technology, you'll have a little bit of light bleeding or the uniformity of the light coming through the screen is just not perfect across the screen and it can be noticeable. And for $25,000, you would not expect to have uniformity issues on that 97 inch panel. But unfortunately there is a bit. So if you're watching sports or things are moving side to side, you can sometimes notice a little bit of that cloudiness or dirty screen or uniformity issues. Very disappointing for a $25,000 TV. And with the ultra short throw projector, you're just projecting light up onto a screen. So as long as that screen comes in good shape, you're good to go, no DSC. Unless maybe kids are throwing stuff up onto the screen or rip it. But again, that's a lot less expensive than the $25,000 screen to the left. And the last downside to the G2 or OLEDs in general is that some people get concerned with the possibility of having burn-in because it is organic material and it does have a shelf life, which is supposed to be 10 or 20,000 hours. But some people get concerned 
concerned that there may be issues with that. LG does offer a five year limited warranty on the panel for this G2 specifically. So it's up to you. You'll have to figure out if five year limited warranty is enough peace of mind for you to buy this expensive $25,000 TV that may or may not get burned in. I don't really worry about that too much with the OLED TVs I have, but I know that that is a concern of some people. As far as downsides for the ultra short throw projector, I think I kind of covered them all, but just to summarize, it's not nearly as bright as an OLED TV and the contrast ratio is not nearly as good either. But that's not always gonna matter. Again, we talked about depending on if you're in a bright or a dark room, your use case might be like mine where you don't need to have the OLED TV at full brightness anyway. So in a dark theater room, this ultra short throw is probably plenty bright. And then it comes down to setup and storage and all of that. So you do have to buy a screen, you have to install the screen up on the wall, and then you have the ultra short throw that's gonna sit on a table and you gotta manipulate and get it all in position. And then hopefully no one kicks it or moves it so that you have to set it up all over again. So as long as you're gonna have it in a spot and it's not gonna be messed with, I don't think that's a big deal either. So really, if you have a dark theater room and you wanna get a 100 inch or larger screen, the ultra short throw has to be something you consider. I think for most people, it's plenty bright, it looks great, great. It has almost every feature that you'd want out of a regular TV and the overall size just can't be undervalued. It's huge. And on top of that, it's so much less expensive. We're talking one fifth of the price of this OLED TV. And with that sort of money, I mean, you can buy yourself an entire home theater. I've gone to jobs where I've quoted the entire system, the projector, the screen, speakers, couches, everything you can think of, including installation for $20,000 or less. So it's nice to know that you can start out with a high quality projector for this price and then build around it with that kind of money because let's be honest a $25,000 OLED TV is not in everybody's budget but if it is in your budget I have to say the G2 gallery series in 97 inch is pretty breathtaking it has amazing picture quality again it has the individual pixel level control so you get perfect contrast bright highlights really good shadow detail and it's not just like it's any TV off the shelf I mean it's beautiful it's meant to go on the wall a very thin one inch design, great connectivity, good speakers, and it does come with that five year warranty. So, you know, if you're afraid of burn in or anything like that, you got yourself covered. And because I said I was gonna show it at its full potential, it's time for us to crank up the OLED to full power and adjust the camera exposure to show you how good it looks and how bright the potential is versus this ultra short throw projector. Okay, as you can see, once it's cranked up to 100%, you can see the difference. So much brighter, but still retains that perfect contrast. The image quality is really difficult to beat. But I think we should get Jen back out here because she's the real boss and is gonna help me make the right decision. All right, Jen, so what do you think? Well, I mean, I still think that one looks really nice and bright. It's beautiful, but I know that that price tag just isn't going to work with us. So sorry, this one, it's big. I know we all like a big screen. This is going to be really awesome for family movie nights, watching the games, having the team come over and, and all that fun stuff. So I think this is the winner right here. So there you have it. Ultra short throw projector, huge screen, awesome. The OLED, pretty awesome itself too, but really expensive. So I'm glad we have both in the house for you guys to watch this video. Hope it's been helpful. Yep, don't forget to like, subscribe, and do all that kind of good stuff so we can keep videos coming your way. Thanks for watching. Bye. Peace.